So I'm Diego. I'm the co-founder of Super Medium, the browser for the VR internet. Who has tried the uh, Super Medium here in the room? Nice. Um, yeah, I have to say, this is our new logo. And, uh, <laughs> and that's true. So our, <laughs> that's true. So our, our designer was, ira we were, we're iterating over the several prototypes. And we were not happy with any. And we asked him, can you take your three years old and draw something? And this is what she did. And we took it. So <laughs> we are very happy with it. We are going to make t-shirts. OK, among other things, I, I help maintain A-Frame. Uh, who knows A-Frame? Who, who has used A-Frame before? Cool. So I'm going to give you a quick intro of A-Frame and uh, a little bit where, where it is and where we are going. Um, so A-Frame uh, is built on top of WebXR, as uh, Brandon Jones uh, explained before. Uh, it brings all the advantages of the web uh, for immersive, immersive media. So it means it's open, so the web is not, uh, it's not controlled by a single entity. It's connected. All the experiences, that they can be connected with one another, and you can browse from one experience to the, not to, to the next one. And it's instant. So you can publish anything. Anyone can publish anything in seconds. So you don't have to go through stores. You don't have to, to wait for anything, for approval. Uh, you own your content, and you publish in your own terms. But it's very hard to create WebXR experiences, especially for web developers. So one of the main goals of A-Frame is making web, uh, WebXR content creation as easy as possible. So there's a lot of stuff that you have to do in order to have something, a first pixel on screen uh, in, 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 web, in the WebGL world. You have to set up your, your light, you have to set up your cameras, you have to initialize your scene, you have to set up your canvas, uh, set up a render loop, uh, deal with meta tags and mobile if you want a responsive experience. You have pre you pre you pre your, your, your assets and figure out what responsiveness means in your, in your use case. So with A-Frame, we give you everything out of the box. It uses HTML as the scene graph, so you don't have to write any code to get you started. This is how a, a basic scene uh, looks like. So you just need an HTML file, empty. You don't need any building tools, anything. You just have to drop a script tag with, with the A-frame build and write the A scene tag. Inside that, you are going to drop all your, um, all your elements in your scene. In this case, I'm, I'm dropping several uh, geometric shapes, like a box, a cylinder, a sphere, a plane, and sky. This guy is the skybox, the background in, in your 3D scene. And this is what you get. It's no code, just a little bit of HTML. This is very satisfying and very gratifying because uh, getting something quickly on the screen motivates you to dig deeper. And I'm, I have like sort of uh, attention span, and I need this immediate gratification in, or, in order to keep going. But what you saw uh, is a simplification on top of an entity component system that builds on top of 3GS. It gives you um, a certain structure uh, in your project that allows you to share code in a much more easier way. So the same uh, geometric shapes that I saw before, I could express them uh, with entities and components. What you say, like A, a plane, A sphere, A cylinder, they are short, shorthands for entities with their components. And it, uh, an entity on a scene is an empty shell. It doesn't have a, a visual representation. It doesn't have any behavior. So you have to populate your entity with, with components in order to configure, to compose uh, the element in the scene you want. In this case, I'm going to add a geometry, a shape, a sphere. I'm going to add a material. I'm going to add a position, a rotation, and a scale. And I can also add an animation. And I can also add all sorts of logic, like AI or any, any kind of behavior that your interactive application might require. I can also add models in a similar way that, the, that we see on the model viewer that Google is working on. And you can add like, all sorts of logic that reacts to events. In this case, if, if there's an event hit that is uh, triggered on the, on the entity, it, it's going to explode. Explode is, is going to be an animation or any sort of behavior that you attach to that component. So A-Frame builds uh, ships with a lot of built-in components that, to get you started. But there's like a very big community uh, around A-Frame that provides a lot of functionality that, that the core uh, component set doesn't provide. 
So there's, for example, integration with, with lead motion. If you're going to do multi-user experiences, uh, uh, the folks from, from, uh, from Mozilla, you see that Mozilla hubs and maintain all the, the, the component. So it, it's, it allows you to get you a multi-user experience with a couple of single lines of HTML. We have physics engines as well. We have like locomotion uh, systems, in this case, teleport mechanics for, for your application. Uh, we have a, an, an, an environment component that allows you to set up an, an environment to get you started, like to avoid like the blank uh, page syndrome. So it gives you like a nice environment to put your elements, and it's very gratifying to, to have something, a nice environment where you can start working. Uh, we have keyboards uh, that are customizable. So when you're in VR, so it gives you everything, the ray casting, the selection, different layouts, uh, configurability, you can change the textures, everything. Another of the properties of, of A-Frame, as web developers, we wanted to preserve the properties of the web moving forward into the immersive media. And one of the things that, that we always enjoy on the web is being able to inspect any page and learn from it. So any experience that you find out there made with A-Frame has a built-in inspector. That built-in inspector is, is, a, is at zero cost because there's a secret shortcut that allows you to invoke the inspector, but that inspector is fetched from the network and loaded on demand. So the library doesn't carry that weight if you don't use it. So in this case, for example, if I, I do um, control, -Alt, control -Alt i the scene, the scene is going to pause, and it's going to show me this, this inspector. Pretty similar to the built-in developer tools that you find in any browser today. So with this inspector, you can select uh, any entity. And now the slide system is capturing my events. Uh, I can move it here. I can move it. I can edit. I can understand. I can see all the components attached to the entity and learn how this experience is made. And then I can go back. Uh, and all the changes I made in the inspector are preserved. Pretty similar to the DOM inspector that you find in the browser today. So you are more than welcome to, to join the community and, and share your, your experiments and, and learn from, from others. Um, we recently shipped like A-Frame 09.2, and the API is consolidating. So we're in a phase of like profiling, finding performance bottlenecks, solving all the issues in order to consolidate the API before 1.0. Um, when is 1.0 when is going to ship? Uh, Brandon Jones has the answer. So you want to ship uh, A-frame <laughs> uh, 1.0 along the WebXR spec when it's final? Because we expect from 1.0 to have some guarantees that the API is not going to break, and uh, some guarantee like backwards compatibility moving forward. So we want to make sure that we have the final API to build on top with a solid and API, and then just, uh, yeah. Yeah, this is some of the features that are, uh, are going to ship on, on, on A-Frame 1.0. As I said, performance improvements, API stabilization. We're going to move finally to Custom Elements V1, because we've been using Custom Elements V0 for a while. And uh, yeah, we have to move, we have to move forward. Uh, uh, Chrome is going to deprecate uh, very soon the V0, and, and we, wanna, we don't want to rely on polyfills, that it, it has some overhead. One important change moving to 1.0 is making the DOM optional. Because the DOM is a very nice declarative layer in order to develop your experiences, but it has a little bit of overhead. So once you, should, you want to ship in production your experience, it, it would be nice if you could shed the DOM and just ship the logic that you, that you build on top of the, that declarative layer. So you're gonna make a, we are going to make a debug mode that allows you to, to still use the DOM. And when you ship in production, it's going to shed off all that code. And I'm going to show you, um, besides A-Frame, uh, A-Frame itself, the core, the entity component system of, of 3GS, is just one part of the ecosystem. As I said, we want to make tools on top that make content creation easier and easier. And I'm going to give you a small demo of where the inspector is going at the moment. 
So the demo I showed you before allows you to open any website, and you can edit. But those edits are, are lost once you reload the page. So it would be nice if you can actually take a page, edit, and save it back locally. And right now we have a thing called the A-Frame Watcher that you can all uh, use today. It already works for steam polishing. But the idea is that you, once you install A-Frame Watcher, you can install it, you can invoke it, say the files you want to observe I'm just going to start. I'm, I'm, I'm booting up just a standard like web server to be able to access from, from the browser. And now I can open my page here. And it's the same pattern. But now the behavior of, this, of the inspector changes. So when I load the inspector, I can just select an entity. I can move it around. And there's a new button that appears here. So there's a WebSocket connection open up that the inspector is able to detect. And it's going to show you this icon. This icon means that you can save back to local whatever changes you make on the, on the browser. So if I click the button, it's going to prompt me here. Do you allow the Inframe Inspector Watcher to write these updates directly within your directory? I mean, we could, we could update automatically, but we want to make sure that the, the developer has always control of what's going on, what's going on. So once you confirm the changes, all, all All those changes are preserved in, in, in the local uh, file that I was, I was uh, loading on the browser. Uh, and that's it. That's all I have. Yeah. Thank you.